Hello! Welcome back to Too Many Handhelds. I am playing Bloodstained. And I'm playing it on a tabletop with a phone, kind of. Um, we have kind of a neat device today. This is the Surface Duo, which is a foldable device. And this is kind of a new class of device that's come out in the last couple years. There are a couple different versions of these devices. Um, some of them, the screen itself folds, and those are obscenely expensive. Way more than I'm willing to spend on something that I'm not even going to use as my phone, but would rather use as a tablet. But, for a little gaming system, this thing rocks! Um, this is the mobile version of Bloodstain. Um, you can play it with touch controls, which you could see on there, but I would prefer to use this 8-bit Duo controller. Um, I always said it was 8-bit Do because I thought they were trying to sound like Nintendo, but they recently came out and said, no, it's 8-bit Do. And I would assume that's because they don't want Nintendo to sue them. <laughs> but um, as you can see, this runs really well. Now, it doesn't look great. It looks kind of like the Switch version, but they had to get the file size down to make it a mobile app. But just the fact that I can play Bloodstain on this device that I can fit in my pocket, which, unlike my Switch, I can, says a lot. So we're going to take a look at a lot of the things this device can do. Um, this is just the very tip of the iceberg. And uh, yeah, let's get started. Okay, so this is what the device looks like. It's like this, the hinge is on here. You have like two little hinges and two screens. Uh, the Monokuma sticker is not stock. I actually added that, and there's a reason you'll see why. Um, this is a character from a game called uh, Danganronpa, which is a really good uh, murder mystery. So I've been getting into those games recently, but uh, if we go like this, ah, that is my wallpaper, because you have two screens. It, I figured that kind of splits nicely. Um, supposedly with this character, they said that this smile is actually inspired by the character Venom with Marvel, which I thought was kind of interesting. But, uh, yeah, you can use this thing in a couple different ways. So, if we fold it like this, this side will turn off, but you could double tap it if you want to switch which one you use. And then you can use just one screen if you want to do something in one screen. You can also have two apps running at a time and have one on this screen and one on this screen which I haven't really found a need for, but I mean, maybe if you want like a game on one screen and a guide on the other, I don't know, or you want to like watch a video and browse the web, you could do that too. Um, for books, it's really cool. I think that's the first thing we'll take a look at once I get this back into focus. Okay, so one of the things I like reading on tablets in general, but even, you know, smaller devices like this are old gaming magazine scans. Um, you can find these on websites like Retromags or uh, Archive.org has a whole bunch of them. But it's kind of interesting to see what people were thinking about certain games back in the day when they were new. And as you can see, the seam gets kind of in the way. It's the only thing that's kind of annoying is it's like the DS where there's like this sort of seam where those are. Again, you can get devices where the whole screen folds and you don't have that. But some of the earlier ones had issues where after folding it and unfolding it a bunch of times, you'd get a hairline that wouldn't go away or the screen itself would develop issues. And honestly, just for the price, I feel like it's just not quite there yet. So I'm gonna wait before I pick up something like that. But uh, you know, you can go like that to see the, the whole cover if you'd like to. Or again, with most layouts, they're like this, where there, there are two, two uh, pages and you can see both at the same time. So you could see old game magazine ads like Axelay here. I mean, it's just kind of cool. You know, they, they have like controllers that they talk about like how great these controllers are and like some of them, don't even remember them. Um, you know, there's Faceball. That was like an early uh, FPS kind of a game with smiley faces. I don't know. It's just fun to go through them. But being able to read like this is really nice. And this is just magazines. You could read ebooks. You could read comics. Uh, the Kindle app works on here. It's a really cool way to read something that's very compact and fits in your pocket. And, you know, the text can be kind of tiny, but you can also, like, pinch and zoom if you want to and easily read whatever you want to read. Okay, next, this is going to be a little tough to film, but this is Game Pass streaming. If you'll notice, the game is on this screen, the buttons are down here. Now, not all games support this because the big downside is you have touchscreen buttons. So, games like Katamari Dimacy were added. Um, this is a game called Rain on Your Parade, which it's a fun indie game where you play a cloud, and as a cloud, you uh, go around, well, ruining people's day, really. It's kind of like uh, Untitled Goose Game, in a way. 
Um, I have beaten it already, which is why it says you've beat the game edition. Uh, I did not beat it on this device, but, um, you know, it does work. But you can use the controls like this to move the character around, and then you could rain on stuff. And shoot lightning. I always forget what button does what. There we go. So, yeah, you're a cloud, you go around, you rain on stuff, and then you get more power as uh, the game goes on. Let's go to the first level here, that's the wedding. And you unlock more objectives as you play through it more. But this is kind of a cool thing, because remember, uh, when the DS went away, oh, I keep forgetting it's not a touchscreen game. <laughs> uh, when the DS and the, the Wii U went away, one of the things we talked about was how there aren't really any dual screen systems that have a touchscreen as one of the uh, you know screens, and that's exactly what this is. So, it's kind of amazing, you know, to have something like this. And, again, there is kind of limited support in what games have controls like this, because you wouldn't want to play Halo or Gears of War with touchscreen controls, and they know this. So if you try to play those games, it'll prompt you to pair a controller, like that 8-bit do or 8-bit do, whatever they want to call themselves these days, and then it works fine, which is great. And you can also um, extend it across if you really want to and go full screen. And then the buttons are overlaid on there, but that could get kind of strange too. So it's, it's all up to how you want to play it. And I just think it's cool that there are this many options with a game that's streaming. I mean, it doesn't even take up space on this device. And, you know, I could play it as long as I have a Game Pass subscription. So it's kind of a neat way to, to utilize Game Pass. Oh. <laughs> there's a DS emulator, so this is drastic. Um, I have both screens set up to take up the full screen, but you could also cut it down a little bit, which is good for the second screen. So if you have a game that has touchscreen controls and you have to use the touchscreen and physical controls, that would work well. Again, this is a good system to, to set up the 8-bit Do controller with and then just get rid of the on-screen one. But just to show you, I have this set up. So we'll play a quick little bit of Mario Kart here. No, I don't want to do that. Come on. And that's the downside of overlaying those. You know, you keep like hitting the wrong thing, which is a mistake. But what's cool about this, too, is if you look, check out that 3D model. Like, they really... I don't know if they up the resolution or what it is, but this looks better than an actual 3DS or a regular DS. Well, both for that matter. I mean, it's it's just amazing to me that this is set up like this. Like Mario looks really good, and it's just the same character model that's that's in it. It's the same ROM. Let's see how well they could play this with two fingers as opposed to uh, a controller. <laughs> Probably not well. But just the fact that you can put DS games in here is kind of amazing. Now, I would not play anything other than maybe RPGs, the touch controls, because touch controls just by nature are kind of tough to work with. Like right there, I just accidentally came off the gas a little bit. What is going on? Like I said, touch, contr touch controls are not ideal, but they can work. And it's hard to play through a viewport, so I think I'm doing a lot better without the viewport. We'll turn to the bullet. There we go. But just the way you have like this little foldable thin thing that is like a DS that plays DS games, it just it blows my mind a little bit. And it's such a cool application of a device like this. I'm not even going to attempt to drift with touch controls. <laughs> I can't imagine. But uh, God, it looks so good. I mean, this is great. And that's the thing, like, Android does a really good job of playing DS games with emulators, but there's always a concession where, you know, you either have the screen side by side, or like, you know, it just doesn't feel the same as an actual DS. Aside from the controls, this actually feels like a DS, where on the bottom I have my map, on the top I have the gameplay screen, you know, there's a touch screen, and it, it really feels good. So, this is one more application of this device. Okay, so just to show you how apps work, this is the calculator app. There's nothing special about it, but you can take this little handle here, drag it to the middle, and you can go to that side, or in the seam. There we go. And you could span the full width and do that. 
Not all interfaces work well. Sometimes they put the buttons where the seam is. That's not good. But, um, you know, it's just kind of a useful thing. So if we want it, we can have the calculator there. And I don't know, what do I have on here? Yeah, so we have the Game Pass app on this side and the calculator on this side. If you, for some reason, want to use Game Pass and the calculator at the same time, I don't know why you would, but it's a possibility. And then you can always swipe one away and go like that. You know, make it full screen or, you know, switch sides. Or again, if you want to watch a video, it's nice to do that. And then you get like your video and you have it stand up like a tent. So there's a lot of different ways you can use this device. It's really versatile. It's really useful. It's really fun. Uh, I really love the Surface 2 or the Surface Duo. There is a new one called the Surface 2, which is why my brain is crossing wires. Uh, that one is a lot more expensive than what I paid for this. Um, I kind of lucked out because when this, the second one came out, this one kind of tanked in price briefly, and that's when I picked it up. But now they are more expensive than I think I'm willing to pay. Um, overall, though, I think it's a really cool device. It's definitely worth checking out if you're into this kind of thing. Thank you for watching. Always remember to charge your handhelds, and I will see you next time.